Hello folks, and welcome to Speedrun Explained Black Mesa 2021 edition. In this 12 part series I will go through the whole of Black Mesa with you. I will show you all the tricks, I will explain all the skips, and I will show you all the setups for all categories, going from easy to hard to world record pace. This is part 1, where I'll show you how to set up the game for speedrunning and teach you the basics of the movement. So to start off, you want to own the game on Steam, and you want to go to speedrun.com slash bms, link in description, and you want to choose what version of the game you want to run. The oldest version of the game you can choose is the 2012 mod version of the game. This version runs on a unique engine compared to all the other versions, it runs on the 2007 Source SDK. This means it has some unique features, for example prop climbing, but it also means it's very buggy and prone to crashing. And also the bunny hopping in this version is weird because the gravity is higher than is supposed to be, which means Gordon can jump only really low, he can barely jump over a tin can, which makes the bunny hopping really weird. Another thing to note is that this version of the game only includes the earth levels, which means the game ends in lambda core when you enter the teleporter that's supposed to take you to zen. Overall, unless you're someone who likes Half-Life 2 old engine or something, I really don't recommend you play this version, and this guide will not show you any mod version strats, just throwing it out there. The next version that exists is the Zenjin beta branch version. This is the last version of the game before Zen was released, so it also only includes the earth levels, but it runs on the custom Black Mesa version of the Source engine. This version has some unique skips which were fixed in later patches, but it has really bad movement, because there's really high friction, which means your bunny hopping needs to be basically tick perfect, otherwise you lose all speed at the moment you land. This means that the most consistent way to move fast is just running, and to gain more speed you have to utilize some explosive boosts. Also for legacy reasons void clips are allowed, and I'll explain later why this is not a good thing. Overall, this version is kept on the leaderboards mainly for historical reasons, it's not really fun to play, and no one should run it anymore. The next version of the game you can play is the current Steam version, also known as Definitive Edition. This version of the game is the best looking, the most stable, and it's fine to speedrun, although it is slightly slower because of some of the map changes that were made. It includes the Zen levels, of course, and it's a version of the game you will play if you want to speedrun any Black Mesa mods like Hazard Course. And finally, the main version of the game used for speedrunning, which is the 0.9 pre-release version of the game from December 2019. This version of the game includes the Zen levels, but doesn't include all the map changes made in 1.0, which makes it the overall fastest version for speedrunning. The rest of this guide will be for the 0.9 version of the game, although most of the things that I will talk about will work in Definitive Edition as well. To get the 0.9 version of the game, you want to go to speedrun.com slash bms, click on resources, and go to the Black Mesa version archive. You'll get to this very nice Google document. What you want to do is you want to look at the bottom bar and click the archive tab. Scroll down until you find the 0.9 version and click the direct download button. Now I should mention that this is not a cracked version of the game. You need to own the game on Steam for this and you have to have Steam open for it to work. Anyway, once you have it downloaded, all you have to do is extract the archive anywhere and inside there is bms.exe and that's how you will launch the game. Now I recommend you make a desktop shortcut for this exe because it will be useful later. Now that you have the game, I will explain the categories for you. The main category is no void clip. You can notice that there is no any percent category. That's because any percent would have to allow void clips and void clips are really really not fun. Void clipping is utilizing tick perfect safe loads to keep horizontal speed through the void. This would allow you to go straight from the beginning of the map all the way to the end of the map. Now the reason why this is not fun is because the way a typical void clip works is that you get stuck in the ground somehow, usually with a prop clip, then you give yourself speed in the direction you want using some explosives, and then you keep save loading until the speed you got carries you all the way to your destination. This means you will stare at loading screens for literally minutes. Now the reason why this is worth it is because we don't count loading screens into the final time. It's because everyone has different PCs and counting loading screens wouldn't be very fair. 
but the consequence of this is that you will have people doing void clips, which count for 10 seconds in the in-game time, but mean looking at loading screens for 5 minutes in the real world. So we decided collectively as a community that this is not fun and that void clipping would be banned and the main category of the speedrun would be no void clip, which allows all forms of clipping through walls except void clipping. The other category that you can run is no clipping and no clipping forbids all kinds of clipping and going through walls. The speedrun is slower but it is more consistent because prop clipping can be a bit RNG sometimes. No clipping's main focus is on the movement, and for these reasons, the category is very good for beginners, although you can start with no void clip as well. And the other choice you have to make is game length. There is Earth plus Zen, also known as full game, and then there are the two subparts, Earthbound and Zen only. These were made because uh, the two halves of the game are quite a bit different, and there was demand in the community to have competition in the two halves separately. It is also useful because a lot of new learners focus on the earth levels because they are quite normal compared to zen levels which are quite a bit different. So a lot of new folks start by doing earthbound speedruns which is good because it lets them compete against each other and see their improvements while submitting runs to the leaderboard. The next thing you need is the timer. For that we use a software called LiveSplit which you can download on their page. After you install LiveSplit, you need the source splitter for Black Mesa. You can find the link on speedrun.com under resources and the link takes you to a Google Drive where you just download the DLL and place it in the LiveSplit components folder. After that, you need a split file for Black Mesa and a layout. You can find these under resources as well. Save these anywhere, for example make a folder inside LiveSplit's folder. Open LiveSplit by double clicking the split file. Now you want to set in the layout. To do that, right click the live split window, select open layout and select from file. Next you want to activate the in-game timer and auto splitter. To do that click edit splits, make sure that the game name is set to Black Mesa and when you do that uh, game time and auto splitting will be available. Click the activate button and then click the settings button and just make sure that under game process list there is pms.exe and that game time is set to engine with ticks. Finally, right click the live split window again and make sure that under compare against it's set to game time and not real time. And that's it. Now your live split should work properly when in game. Now let's talk about setting up the game for speedrunning. First go into the folder where you extracted 0.9 and if you haven't already make a desktop shortcut for bms.exe. Now right click the desktop shortcut, click properties and into this line enter the following launch commands dash steam local dash console and what this will do is it will make the game launch much faster and will also prevent time loss if the game crashes and if you're running 0.9 the game will crash once per run guaranteed. Next go into the Black Mesa folder again and go into the BMS folder and then into the CFG folder. Open the auto exets.cfg file. If it's not there already, create it yourself. Just make sure it's really called autoexets.cfg and not autoexets.txt because then it won't work. This is the file autoexets.cfg and you want to add in these two commands. First is cl underscore show fps1 which will not only show your, your frame rate but it will also show you the name of the map you're currently in which is very useful when you're learning the game and you don't quite know the map names. And the second command is even more important that's cl underscore show boss one and that one will show you your coordinate positions, your angle and your velocity. The position and angle are useful for setting up some precise tricks and the velocity is just useful information to know how fast you're going, how good you're b-hopping and also for some tricks where you need to reach a certain velocity in order to make it. So put these two commands in and uh, you'll find them in the description if you want to just copy paste. Now let's go into the game to set up the rest of the stuff. If you added the dash console launch command to your desktop shortcut, then the menu will look like this without the 3D background. Let's go into options. The first tab is the difficulty tab. Play on easy. This is important because that way we take less damage from self boosts, which are a big part of this game. Next tab is the keyboard tab. You can change some options here. For example, you can move the duck key, which you will be pressing for a big part of the game. So Maybe you might want to move it to shift or space. I use control because I have a big hand and I don't mind using control for that. 
next you might want to change the quick save and quick load buttons from F6 and F7, which are the defaults, to something closer. I use FNG, as you can see. And one more important button is a quick bind for the Tau Cannon. Doesn't matter how you switch the other weapons. I personally, I use the default Half-Life way, which is to use the categories and then confirm with left click. But the Tau Cannon gets an exception, because you really need it at any moment in time for a quick boost at any moment. So I have it on Shift. And the most important thing to change in the keyboard tab is to go into Advanced and enable the Developer Console. That allows you to open it with the tilde key and input some commands, for example, to bind some of the more complex stuff that we need. Next, the mouse tab. Here, set the sensitivity to whatever you like and make sure to tick Raw Input and disable mouse acceleration. This will make your mouse movement a lot more consistent and allows you to build up muscle memory over time. Next, let's skip over the audio tab and go straight into video tab. Here, if you have just one monitor, you might want to change display mode to borderless full screen so that you can see the live split timer while you're playing. Because if you go with normal full screen, the timer will be hidden behind the game. Next, you want to go into advanced and uh, Black Mesa runs on the source engine, so it's not that demanding. And you can set all the old source options to high. But Black Mesa also adds some new graphical options, which are down here. And these can be slightly demanding, and they also seem to make your loading times just a bit longer. So if you want to go for full speed like I do, then I recommend you uh, disable or set them to potato. Finally, the Black Mesa tab. Here you can find some cosmetic options, for example, whether you want the camera to tilt when strafing, or God Rays and Lens Flares, which are some more graphical options. But the two important things here are Enable Auto Crouch Jump, which makes you crouch whenever you're jumped, which is very useful for the movement. And finally, Enable Always Run, which not only makes that you don't have to hold the sprint key whenever you want to run. That actually also makes you move faster underwater and when crouched. And the when crouched part is very important because that actually enables us to do the sliding movement in this game, which is the fastest way to accelerate. So make sure you have this on. Now let's go into the console so we can set up some of the more complicated keys that you will need for speedrunning this game. Let's start with the simple ones. First, you want to bind jump to your scroll wheel, because that will allow you to make many jump inputs in a short amount of time in order to hit that perfect bunny hop. In order to do that, you want to jump, uh, type bind m wheel down plus jump, or m wheel up plus jump, or both. Next, you want a save loading bind, especially if you want to run the no void clip category. To do that, you type in bind the key, for example, I use T. And next you want the quote marks because it's a multi-word command and it's safe, quick, semicolon, which just can close your console, so just open it back up again, load quick. And this will do a quick save and a quick load at the same time, or well, not at the same time, right after each other. Next, a very useful bind is to bind a load key for your autosave, because sometimes you don't have the quick save in just right the right spot and you want to go back a bit further. Similar thing, you want a hard save bind. So for that you type in save, but instead of quick you just type in anything like that. And a load command for that. So load thing. And now we're getting into the really complex stuff. Next you want a save deleting bind. What this does is it creates a save that is not valid in Windows, and so when you try to load it, instead the map will reset and it will give you some HP and ammo and armor and stuff. So to do that, again, you need quotes, save, and now semicolon, because semicolon is not a valid file name in Windows, and reload. So what this will do is it will try to reload the save that you just made, but it will fail. Finally, a bind for the quantum pause trick, which is used to freeze Gordon mid-air while keeping the rest of the world still moving. And to do that, you bind toggle console, one word, followed immediately by unpause. And that opens up the 
pause menu. It's the same as pressing escape. It opens up the pause menu and unpauses the game at the same time, which will result in the quantum pause state. You will find all these binds in the video description. Now let's talk about the game's movement. Black Mesa is lucky enough to be blessed with some interesting movement mechanics, which makes the game much more interesting to speedrun in the long term than if the best way to move would be just to hold forwards and run. As you can see in the top right, I have 320 velocity when running forwards, also to sides and even backwards. First way to increase this velocity is by bunny hopping. You might know bunny hopping from Half-Life 1. Bunny hopping is when you air strafe mid-air while also moving your camera in that same direction and this gives you some speed. Let me demonstrate. If you pay attention to the top right you can see that I have momentarily increased my velocity when I perform this sort of movement. And if I were to chain these jumps I could increase the movement gain. However, it's quite hard to hit those precise timings for the jumps with just my spacebar and that's where the scroll wheel comes in. Using my scroll wheel I can actually manage to hit those jumps much more precisely and I can I can actually get a decent amount of speed. Wow, that was a lot of speed for a moment. Fortunately, eventually you will run into the other enemy of moving fast and that's friction. The Soros engine and definitely Black Mesa in particular, has much higher friction than you would see in Half-Life 1. On one hand, this makes the movement much less floaty and more pleasant, especially for the casual player, but it also is allows to do bunny hopping so easily. And that's where the other movement mechanic of Black Mesa comes in, and that's the sliding. Sliding was added in with the Zen update, and it I think it was added in to simulate power sliding you would see in action movies. You know, when the doors are closing in from the top and the action heroes runs in like this and slides underneath them. What sliding really does is that it momentarily decreases your friction when you're going from a running movement and crouching. You can hear that sliding has been initiated because the game makes this sort of rustling noise. We can abuse the fact that we have lowered friction to improve our bunny hopping. All we have to do is to hold crouch while doing it. Like this. As you can see, when I'm holding crouch, I can very comfortably hit really great bunny hops using just the spacebar, but it's still preferable to use the scroll wheel. The speed gain is slightly slower than you would see in top Half-Life 1 speedruns, but still I'm able to get a good amount of speed really quickly. I hit about 600 for a moment there, I saw. So that's not, there's not much to it. As long as you don't hold W midair, or just run, hold crouch, and start air strafing. You can make bigger turns, smaller turns. As long as you don't touch W at all, you should be able to gain some speed. In fact, let me demonstrate even more. I will crouch to not gain any head start by running, and I will never touch W, and all I'll do is I'll air strafe. I'll make small circles and as you can see in just a few moments I'm already at running speed and now I have exceeded running speed and now I'm just bunny hopping and I did that from a complete standstill. Let me do that again. Crouch and just make small circles. By the way, I recommend you practice your movement on this map. It's the first map of the second chapter of the game, Anomalous Materials, and it features hallways that are slightly complex, so that they are interesting to move through, but not too complex to make it really hard to not bump into stuff and such. So this is a great place for practice. 
So that was bunny hopping. But now let's talk more about sliding. The fact that we have reduced friction allows us to not even have to jump at all. We can just perform the same air strafing movement while on the ground. Let me first demonstrate from a single jump. And now instead of jumping, I'm just air strafing while on the ground. And I'm still gaining speed because the air strafing speed gain is bigger than the speed I lose through friction. In fact, the acceleration while sliding is much higher than the acceleration while bunny hopping, which means sliding is the superior way to gain speed in a short amount of time. Now let's talk in detail about how to actually do this. The easiest way to do a sliding movement is to do a single jump. So you run forward, you do a jump, and then you start behaving like you're sliding. The most professional way to do this is to do it without a jump. To do that, you will hold f forwards, choose a side you want to slide to, so let's say to the left now. You crouch and crouch and at the moment you hear the rustling noise of the sliding being initiated you let go of W. Let me do that to the other side. That was pretty good. You don't even have to look to the side like I did previously. You flick your mouse, you really just hold forwards and the moment you hear the rustling noise you start doing air strafing movement. So with these two techniques you are prepared to go very quickly through all the hallways Black Mesa throws at you. There is one or well two uh, disadvantages to sliding. First is you are less mobile, you have a slight, you have a smaller turning rate. Let me demonstrate around this lobby table. When I bunny hop, I'm able to easily make it around it. In fact, uh, my turning rate is so good when bunny hopping that I can do a 180 in this hallway and not lose much speed. There we go, a 360. This is not possible when sliding. Your turn rate is worse, so turning corners is much more difficult. Doing a 180 is essentially impossible. The second disadvantage of sliding is the fact that the acceleration only reaches to about 550 units per second, as you saw in the top right. So what you want to do is you want to initiate by sliding and then you want to start bunny hopping so that you can continue to build speed above those 500 to 550 units. The one advantage of sliding is that it smooths over small uh, bumps in the terrain. So, for example, this bench. If I try to jump right in front of it, pretty hard to... There we go. I bump into it because it is a step, no matter how small. But if you do a sliding movement into it, you go up the bench without any issues. This means sliding is very useful when going upstairs. You cannot bunny hop upstairs, but you can slide up them. Fortunately there are no stairs around here, only ramps, so I can't demonstrate, but uh, take my word for it. Anyway, I'd say that's uh, enough as a primer for Black Mesa movement. Obviously it takes some practice to master it, but I'd say that Black Mesa movement is uh, more beginner friendly than uh, regular Half-Life 1 bunny hops or Half-Life 2's ABH. So go to this map or maybe to Questionable Ethics, that's also a good chapter, and try to move as smoothly or at least almost as smoothly as I do. And 
you had uh, my keyboard input on the screen the whole time, so I recommend you really watch that carefully uh, when you try to replicate this. You know, feel free to rewatch this part multiple times. Anyway, that's it for the movement, and enough for part one. And in part two, we'll start to go through the game proper, starting with, of course, anomalous materials.